percuter euh, l'open source permet aux entreprises traditionnelles de se réinventer. Ce matin, grâce à Red Hat, nous avons une vision des, des changements de paradigme euh, récents. Et ainsi, nous voyons les modèles d'entreprise s'inventer également autour du cloud. Il faut dire que la situation économique y est propice. Euh, comment profiter au mieux du cloud en évitant ses écueils euh, Il est temps d'ouvrir la discussion du cloud avec euh, Monsieur Bill McNee, euh, qui se dédie aux tendances émergentes et aux technologies disruptives dans l'industrie IT. Bill Well, good afternoon, everybody. I apologize that my French is terrible, but I think you'd be much uh, happier having me give this presentation today in English. So uh, I am happy to be here. I love to come to Paris. I guess this is my third time this year. And uh, I might get one more chance this year uh, to come back. But today I'm going to share some perspective, some uh, a vision perhaps, um, in terms of where we see the cloud at today and in kind of more of a three to five year vision or scenario of where it is going uh, in the near term. I guess we'll do this then. So let's start off with just a discussion uh, relative to uh, uh, some of the, the uh, discussions that we're having with some of our customers. And in, in our view, in the face of the Great Recession, or maybe we're actually returning to the Great Recession, maybe that's one of the challenges that we face, businesses of all sizes are reshaping themselves to better compete in an increasingly intertwined and global economy. This includes rethinking and reinventing new ways of engaging with existing customers, as well as carving out new businesses. I share this in a moment I'm going to be talking not about cloud computing. We think that's a terrible set of terms because the focus is on the compute. Instead, we're going to talk about cloud IT, and we're going to talk about cloud business which are ways of both consuming the cloud, but also leveraging the cloud for competitive advantage. Recent discussions with senior business and IT leaders, in particular at large enterprises, uh, have emphasized both the power and the threat of the cloud. I'm going to give some examples today of some of those discussions with some of our customers, uh, especially around the concept of accelerating business velocity for firms developing and implementing in the cloud. We'll talk about a discussion we had with a CTO of a uh, Fortune 100 US company. We'll talk about the head of business strategy, not technology strategy, but business strategy, and how they're leveraging the cloud to create new products and services. We'll talk about the CIO of one of the world's largest financial services companies and what they're doing in the cloud. In this environment, IT, the internal IT organization, is increasingly being asked to not only help set companies save money and to facilitate internal process improvement, but to enable the business to grow. These are very difficult challenges to, uh, to meet at the same time. With differentiated new products, services, and offerings, I'll share in particular a vision in particular around this one serv business services company and how they have actually leveraged the cloud to create new products and services. Nobody would think of them as a, a cloud provider per se. Given this, it isn't surprising that IT velocity has replaced business IT alignment as the top concern for many chief information officers. Well. I'm having a challenging time here, moving forward the slides. Senor? Sir? Can you, oh, there. There seems to be a delay, maybe, of the slides. Is that what's going on? Whatever. So um, the, uh, the two terms that I wanted to talk about were cloud IT and cloud business. 
When we talk about cloud IT, we're talking about all of the terminology that we've come to know, which includes IaaS and PaaS and, and uh, SaaS. And I, I think you loaded up the wrong one, actually. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's, okay. it's all right. Don't worry about it. Um, everything as a service with a focus on cost savings and process improvement, the internal consumption of the cloud. The, uh, it is disruptive in terms of IT strategy, in terms of planning, budgeting, buying, and management. As many companies, many in particular upper, mid to large enterprise companies really are not yet um, comfortable with or have become accustomed to the disruptive nature that these technologies are bringing. We believe the biggest challenge that IT organizations will face over the next three years will be in managing the hybrid portfolio. And really it is this combination of pure play cloud assets with on-prem assets that really will help shape the future ar architecture on a go-forward basis. We contrast this with this term cloud business which is really about creating new businesses, new business opportunities, new ways of doing business. And it's driven by the ability that the cloud has uh, in terms of low barriers to entry, proven offerings from providers with viability and vision, previously unrealized levels of business and IT integration. The key challenges on the business side, and I'm not talking about technology uh, provider, Business. I'm talking about traditional businesses and the creation of new IT or uh, cloud-enabled business services. It's number one is identifying the right opportunities, assessing the ROI and the benefits accrued, acquiring the right cloud solutions, and managing those resources. As the role of IT shifts uh, when moving to the cloud uh, from something where we're, we're managing those resources internally to really managing external providers. Let's see if our delay works here again. There we go. So um, let's talk about three examples, three large enterprise customers. What are they doing? The first is the C CTO, Chief Technology Officer of a large information provider across, they, that have services across a wide range of both horizontal and vertical uh, markets. Here's some quotes from a recent interview that we published. Uh, through our service. Uh, I guess because we published it, I can say this was the Chief Inf uh, Technology Officer of uh, Thomson Reuters. Uh, I know that they do business here in France. Quote, our challenge is never to build another data center. It is a very expensive proposition and we'd rather not have to do that. Our focus right now is mostly around the cloud as a means to provide services internally. They just went real big they're, they're, uh, on, on Workday, for example. Quote, the cloud has allowed us to drive a level of simplification, this is one of the key things that he said, and helped us to articulate the high cost of customization to the business. And in fact, he views the cloud and moving to SaaS as a tremendous benefit because it's really forced the business to really think through the cost of customization and the benefits instead of configuration, which SaaS uh, brings to bear. In the short term, we are not yet comfortable with the idea of using public clouds to provide our services. We think that our customers typically will want one th throat to choke, which is a real big issue, in particular over time, as we shift to multi-cloud offerings from multiple providers, and how are we going to create composite SLAs? So in the meantime, as both a consumer of the cloud and the provider of information services, they believe they will not use public cloud services. They will only use private cloud services in providing data uh, uh, that they would uh, deliver themselves. The second, likewise, is an interview we, we published, so I can say who it is. It's the, uh, the president of Fidelity, uh, pr president of, the, uh, of corporate operations and technology of Fidelity. Quote, a lot of the differentiation that we have inside our company is becoming meaningless. Right? So financial services companies, they used to differentiate based on technology. Right? Because of cloud infrastructures are coalescing around a LAMP stack to the point of this conference, or some version of it. With the legacy, there will be a slow migration of technologies that are, that are the equivalent to the cloud, and as cloud continues to decrease in cost, 
the semi-private and public clouds will start to receive more workloads in the five to 10 year time period. However, for the new, it's gonna be 100% cloud at Fidelity. The third is the VP of strategy at Pitney Bowes. This is likewise an interview that we published. Um, the old way of doing product development has been very structured and routine and isn't going to work in the cloud. So we heard uh, just a moment ago the VP of development at a technology company, AOL, and the benefit of going open source and the shrinking of development cycles. But even on the business side of a traditional business brand in moving to the cloud, he believes that he's been able to shorten the typical product development life cycle, not of, of technology, but of the delivery of new products and services from what used to take upwards to two and a half years down to six months through the use of technology, through the use of cloud technologies. The whole, here, let's move forward to the next slide while I finish the last quote. The whole concept of agility that is required to get new businesses up can be dealt with so much easier in the cloud, both in terms of the underlying technology and product development. It is easier to bootstrap a new offering by leveraging the inherent pay-as-you-go pricing of the cloud. Okay, so let's go through at, very quickly some of the dominant trends. Um, first and foremost, today's economic situation, as we mentioned, continues to favor the cloud. We're seeing investment budgets, uh, you know, the, the cloud you know, clearly grown in the 25 to 30 percent uh, range over the planning horizon, whereas total IT budgets are growing actually pretty healthy right now on a global economy basis of 5 to 7 percent. The cloud, including SaaS, PaaS, IaaS, and cloud services, will drive increasing business and IT activity, resulting in hybrid architectures to manage a new cloud IT mission for the IT organization, and the launch of cloud-enabled business services by traditional businesses, per that example from Pitney Bowes. Through 2015, our forecasts are that SaaS will continue to dominate cloud IT spending, including business applications, social computing, and mobility solutions, key aspects of what we're referring to as the boundary-free enterprise. Leading the SaaS charge now will be not only customer service collaboration and Salesforce automation, but business intelligence as the leading cloud business solutions in demand. Following up right behind it is demand for financial analysis and planning and HR, uh, human resource management, which in particular tends to be the, the sharp edge of the wedge for large enterprises going to the cloud, per that comment relative to Workday. Enterprises will increasingly leverage PaaS platforms and ad hoc aggregations of cloud services across the stack through the use of APIs to build composite cloud solutions. This includes cloud services such as SaaS and IaaS, uh, as well as powerful social business and mobile commerce technologies directly embedded into business critical workflows. I went out to uh, Dreamforce. I don't know how many of you folks were out in California a few weeks back. And the work that is going on there, in, in particular today, in adding certain workflow enabled capabilities through the social technologies is what is going to really make social technologies mainstream. Very, very exciting work that they're they're doing with Chatter, for example, adding an approvals capability in Chatter that gets directly embedded into the Salesforce automation capability. Clearly, private clouds are gaining traction, especially at large enterprises wishing to maintain control. Integration and workflow in the cloud will remain a critical capability and requirement, especially for hybrid large enterprises. Let's move to the next slide. Oh, I see. It is working here. So what's on the screen here is not what's up there. All right. Got it. All right. Modern technology at work here. All right. So uh, to kind of summarize some of the points I just made, um, you know, what, what's exciting, I think, really is to understand where is the action happening. And clearly, in the Saugata cloud ecosystem model, 
we forecast that level three, the software as a service or cloud business solutions area, clearly will receive the vast majority of user spending through the planning horizon. Shifting from that front office focus, increasingly from, from Salesforce automation, customer relationship management, uh, customer service, et cetera, to increasingly some of these back office functions, financial accounting in particular, and HR as it concerns large enterprises. And likewise, a major focus around um, level one with, with IaaS. Uh, and I would say level two clearly is, it will be coming on very, very strong. Some very, very interesting work in the platform as a service area uh, with a number of providers. In, in particular, some very interesting initiatives from some open source players, uh, whether that be VMware, whether that be uh, Servoy, uh, et cetera. Uh, our, uh, our colleagues asked uh, me to uh, add some comments as well relative to open source in the cloud echo stack. And in our opinion, uh, over the course of the planning horizon, at least through the next three years, open source will provide uh, low cost building blocks integrated within providers core technology stack solution and solutions. I know that there's a major focus at this conference around open source, but in many ways we believe that open source has won. Open source is fully embedded into virtually all proprietary solutions, and while there will continue to be a healthy, independent open source community, um, in, in many ways it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's silly or ridiculous for uh, many cloud providers in particular, which is the focus of our research, uh, to really deliver a lot of the core underlying building block uh, capabilities. Um, in that environment, LAMP, the LAMP stack will be the de facto SaaS cloud provider technology platform for cloud services and providers. Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, and Ruby. Community-driven global innovation and technology, technologies and applications will support cloud provider evolution. However, we believe that technology standards fragmentation and open community contribution models will continue to challenge widespread, widespread standardization and profitability for open source software developers and providers. And in the scenario, uh, any particular vendor domination is unlikely and impractical uh, given, given some of those challenges. Okay, so I'm going to quickly take us through kind of a, a uh, model that Saugatuck uses called the, um, the four waves model. Um, and it really looks at the evolution of SaaS and cloud technologies and how they've shifted over time. You can see on uh, this chart, first of all, the, the blue line um, represents uh, The blue line represents um, the SAS curve, whereas the dotted blue line represents the cloud curve. And we've migrated from what originally was a, an on-demand to a SAS to a cloud to now a cloud IT and cloud business focus. Let's just very quickly go through how this has evolved. I don't want to go through a big history lesson here, but I think it's important to understand where this thing is headed. Clearly early on, uh, this was all about standalone business applications, multi-tenancy, limited configurability, focus on TCO, and rapid deployment, what we refer to as wave one. Uh, we've been in what we refer to as wave two, integrated business solutions, all about integration. It's about SaaS becoming mainstream, um, and SaaS integration platforms, the development of business marketplaces and SaaS ecosystems. Uh, cut, uh, the migration from configurability to customization capabilities, but at the core, it's been a focus around integration. We're well into wave three, <clears throat> and many th these waves don't end, by the way, but these are the kind of the common characteristics of how this has been a moving a target. The focus in wave three, which we refer to as workflow-enabled business transformation, and ubiquitous SaaS adoption has been uh, around business transformation, 
ISV to SAS enablement, and it has not been easy for many uh, ISVs to transition to SAS. It's such a ter ter tremendous business model and technology transition that, that uh, um, not all companies can succeed, whether it be financial or, or, or other reason. Server and application virtualization, SaaS deployment platforms, but the focus really is around uh, customized and personalized workflows. We're entering what we refer to as wave four, which is all about uh, cloud business processes, intelligent hubs linking platforms, um, cloud infrastructure, integration with mobile devices, uh, around workload, uh, portability, uh, and uh, composite service offerings, and SLAs to support multi-cloud environments. Now, we're, we're kind of between, in many ways, wave three and wave four. So what are some of the key characteristics in what we're referring to as the cloud IT gestation period? I don't know if that translates very well, gestation. It's, we're pregnant with the cloud, but we haven't fully given birth yet to this, uh, this movement. And it's in this environment, we believe that SaaS will remain at the core. PaaS will increasingly enable uh, composite solutions. IaaS at the margins are increasingly around a select group of IaaS providers because of a lack of standards. And mobility collaboration and social business technologies begin to explode, in particular with those collaboration and social technologies increasingly embedding around important uh, business workflows. So our, our, I guess our strategic planning position um, at the back of that last chart is an important one. Through 2015, we believe the largest driver of IT workloads will continue to be cloud business solutions. Key drivers shift, however, from faster, better, and cheaper to transforming the enterprise. So now let's, uh, let's kind of get into some numbers here. Here's some survey data. We regularly conduct uh, buyer demand surveys. I think this one had 546 completes, was done late last year. We're going to be doing our, our 2011 cloud IT survey. We're in the middle of building it right now. We'll go to market soon. Here we asked a question, for each of the following years, please indicate what percent of your company's preference for deploying new software on a continuum of cloud to on-prem will be either pure play cloud, pure play on-prem, or a hybrid cloud with on-prem, either public or private. <coughs> and you can see the numbers. Uh, clearly, the, the on-premise, the red line, is, is dramatically falling through the planning horizon and uh, with both um, uh, pure cloud growing, but also hybrid clouds. And I think, in fact, the blue line will tip up as well, uh, in particular once we uh, develop some interesting uh, composite-based solutions with composite SLAs. So our SPPs, actually, let me read those SPPs. They're good ones. Uh, by 2015, 50% or more these are Sagatuck forecasts. By 2015, 50% or more of new enterprise IT spend will be cloud-based or hybrid. So a typical IT budget today, anywhere from 20 to 30% is on the new, right? In an extreme case, I think the best case I've ever had of a company, they spend about 35 to 40% of their total IT spend on new. But for most organizations, it's anywhere from 10 to 30%. <clears throat> so what we're talking about is the new. And our forecast is of the new, 50% by 2015 will be cloud-based or hybrid. By 2015, 65% or more of new IT enterprise workloads, not just the spending, but the amount of new workloads that will be deployed will be cloud-based or hybrid. And because of the cumulative effect of prior investments by 2015, 25% or more of total enterprise IT workloads will be cloud-based or hybrid. Here we just have a, a quick look at what does that mean relative to various categories of SaaS solutions. 
And clearly you can see that demand uh, is highest amongst those social and collaborative uh, capabilities with software as a service uh, and uh, following closely behind. Uh, platform as a service is the lagger today, uh, but I believe we will be beginning probably in the 2013 time period where we'll start to see past solutions start to become more mainstream uh, beyond the work that Salesforce is doing today as Azure truly gets fleshed out on, and becomes a, uh, a very uh, viable uh, platform for production development. Okay, so let's wrap up with just a couple observations in terms of key challenges and common pitfalls. So, in this environment, in particular for users, what are some of the key challenges? Number one is around IT asset management. Key, very significant challenge. Number two, understanding and managing risk and managing suppliers as increasingly the IT mission shifts from managing IT to managing a portfolio of hybrid assets and external providers. Integration will remain, even though that was on wave two of our four-wave model, integration will remain a key challenge throughout the planning period. Data integration, security, process integration, both internal and external, in particular as organizations, not only to deploy cloud IT strategies, but cloud business strategies. And opportunity recognition and execution. Really, when are we gonna deploy those new cloud-enabled business services? Common pitfalls in the cloud transition. Currently today, there is no formal planning process unlike more traditional IT deployment processes. Missing or poor governance structure, in particular in highly regulatory uh, driven environments and financial services elsewhere. Poor or missing responsibility matrix. Neglecting or underestimating HR and change management challenges. No project management office. Missing or incomplete inventory of assets. Lack of operational oversight. Really, we're at the very early stages of SLA uh, deployment and poor communication to constituencies. So with that, I think the, the key here is to don't necessarily think just about cloud computing, but broaden your horizons to really think about how the cloud is evolving to support both cloud IT and cloud business. And with that, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Bill.